Hi, Claire. So I just took the VIA assessment, and I know a lot now because of the assessment about my my greatest character strengths. Mm -hmm. That's what it that's what it tells a person when they take it. My question to you, though, is I know you're, you're a big fan of the VIA assessment. There are tons of these things in the market. What makes the VIA assessment so special? I'm glad that you asked. I used to teach the VIA to MBA students when mm -hmm. I worked at NC State. Um, and so I got acquainted with it that way and really came to love it. It wasn't actually an immediate love. It grew on me over time. Um, and, but what I really found great about it when working with students, especially I had students from all different backgrounds, from different countries, different ethnicities, different religions, um, the VIA really is a cross-culturally relevant assessment, unlike um, many others that I've seen that try to get there. This one really embraces that. The way it was created, not to bore anyone, but um, it was created actually over the course of three years where 55 researchers and psychologists looked at um, spiritual texts, religious texts, um, philosophical texts to really identify what are the core virtues that um, that create morally ethical and good behavior, what we deem to be good behavior. So the VIA, um, it really breaks up character strengths into six different virtue buckets. Temperance, which is kind of like making sure you're not excessive, make, moderating things. Transcendence, which is really um, looking at connections, looking at bigger picture, even looking at bigger picture, how you how we relate to the universe. Mm -hmm. um, humanity, which is kindness, um, compassion, wisdom, which is kind of self-explanatory, courage, which includes, includes things like bravery, and judgment, which is all about really um, things like honesty. And so I like that it allows for a language that really all of us can identify with no matter where we live or how old we are. Yeah, it's like a global language, mm -hmm. right? And since we're a global organization, that's key. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have to tell you, I, I was, like I said, excited to mm -hmm. get my results. Some of them were pretty obvious to me. My top, my top strength is creativity. Okay. There's also leadership mm -hmm. and honesty. But I was very surprised because lower on the totem pole for me was love. And I consider myself to be a lovable person. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of shocked by that. Do you have you found that uh, that people get shocked by some of their results sometimes? Absolutely. Um, so I want to share a little story about my co-teacher, who um, also taught the VIA at West Point. And so she said that pretty consistently, when she would test the students as a classroom, love would be usually their number one or number two strength, and leadership would be like kind of somewhere in the middle, at, which at West, Point? at West Point, right? So um, she was surprised at first. And then when they the students started talking about it, she quickly realized that the way the military views their relationships with um, their colleagues is a very love relationship. It's almost like family. And so they wow. express their leadership through love. And so what I really enjoy about the VIA is that, for example, with you, your leadership is high but you might be expressing your leadership through acts of love. So by, by showing people that you care about them, by making them know that they're important to you, and that's how you show up as a leader. Ah, well, I like that interpretation. Like it too. makes me feel a lot better about my results. <laughs> Good. Thank you for sharing that. Good. So I guess my next question to you is, how is this applicable? Like, I have my results, mm -hmm. that's great. How do I apply this in, in, in the workplace, at mm -hmm. home? What, what can I do with my results? Um, so I think on an individual level, well, let me ask you a question. So of your top five values that you identified um, are, or character strengths, are there, is there anyone that maybe in a previous position or in a previous relationship or something was missing? From the other person or? No, from, from what you had in that job. So for instance, if you were in a job where you weren't, it, what, oh. honesty didn't show uh, yeah, up. Yeah, well, I mean, I think honesty, luckily, has has been a key part of all my positions. But there are there have been certain positions where I was not really allowed to be as creative mm -hmm. as I would like to have been. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a creative person, I can usually find ways to be creative. Mm -hmm. But if, if there's a roadblock there, I mm -hmm. really don't feel as if I can be as successful as I, I just can't. Uh, yeah, be as successful mm -hmm. as I could if I could exert those strengths. So I think that you just identified something really important. I think a lot of times we can get disengaged at work mm -hmm. 
often for reasons we're not even aware of. And so the VIA allows for kind of a self-awareness where if you know what your character strengths are and you can sit down and think about, how is this not showing up for me at work? It's much easier to have a conversation with your supervisor at that point and say, I recognize that this isn't showing up for me. Are there ways that we can you know, work to make this a greater part of my day-to-day -day work instead of just disengaging because you don't really know why you feel like you don't belong or, or why it's not working for you. That's true, and I, I, like, I, I took this with some colleagues mm -hmm. of mine, and something that I've taken away is knowing a little bit more about their strengths, mm -hmm. their, their highest strengths, is it, it helps me understand how better to collaborate with them. It also has taught me a lot of patience, to be honest with mm. you, because when I take a step back and, and I realize that you, th they have they have all these wonderful strengths. They're just operating in a different mode than I am. It, it's really taught me a lot of patience. Right. That's been my personal experience. Right. Yeah. So that's great. Um, so I think on an individual level, it just increases your self awareness, and then it increases your ability to make good decisions because you actually have uh, an understanding of what matters to you and what's important to you. Um, I think from a team perspective, there's some real opportunity there. Um, one of the things that I like to do with teams is have everyone take the VIA <clears throat> and then identify from everyone's individual character strengths, what are the top ones? And so then maybe you make a top five. These are our team's top five strengths, character strengths, which is great. And so then you know and you have a common language behind that. Like an aggregate. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so, so essentially what you're saying is the majority of people on this team value yep. X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of map them to maybe the organization's larger goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. How can we accomplish our goals and objectives through the use of these character strengths? Where it gets a little tricky, and actually where I have a particular interest, is that um, what about those people who don't share those strengths? What about the people on your team whose strengths don't show up in any of the top five strengths? I think those people are at a greater risk for disengagement. And I think those people are kind of your your superstars hiding in the corner because what they can do is really poke holes in where you're not seeing something. Because for instance, let's take honesty. Um, so if honesty is a core team value, which is great, we should all be honest. <clears throat> If someone's on your team who has um, social intelligence as one of their top values, their primary thing is going to be considering how do these decisions impact others on the team externally? You know, how do our customers feel about this? And so while honesty is always great, perhaps the person with social intelligence can come in and say, let's craft this message in a way where we're being honest, but we're also being considerate and, and compassionate in the way we deliver it. So that's just one example of, I think, a way that those, those outliers can really provide strength to your team. That's right. If you have a bunch of people on a single team that, that really have one strength, you, you're going to have a myopic view, mm -hmm. perspective of everything you're mm -hmm. trying to do. If my team was composed of nothing but creative people, mm -hmm. we might have great ideas, but we wouldn't be able to execute <laughs> right. those ideas necessarily. Right. So that's, that's incredible. Well, speaking of that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I've maybe answered my question, but a strength can also be a weakness if it's an overdrive. Can you talk a little bit about that? I don't like to call it a weakness. Uh, okay. I like to That's call it. Point. I like to That's call a it point. a shadow side. So, oh, so okay, every good. strength has a shadow side. So that means that, for instance, um, creativity also shows up high for me. So sometimes. I can get so excited about improving things or coming up with new ideas that I do that even when it's unnecessary. Okay. <laughs> so sometimes just taking things like, oh, this is good enough, I don't need to inject any kind of uniqueness to this project. I have to make sure that I'm aware of that because it can go into overdrive. Um, you know, love of learning is another one that shows up for me. I spent probably way more time than I want to admit preparing for this, even though <laughs> I know this stuff. You know, that kind of desire to accumulate knowledge can go a bit into overdrive and I need someone to say, there, you've got it. Snap out of it. it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's it's more of a shadow side. But I think that's where the people who maybe are the outliers on your team can really, really add value. Well, I think this has been a great conversation. I'm, I'm glad that you wanted to talk to me about Good, this. Me too. I'm glad that you're an enthusiast as well. I am. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you for tuning in. Please continue to tune in for future human intelligence series segments in the future.